Hi you guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Chelsea J and the Lord has something to say, okay? So I'm back with another word from the Lord um, to release to you guys. As always, I'm going to hop right on into this word. This is coming from a dream that the Lord gave me. I hope that you guys can hear me well. If you've been here for a while, then you know that sometimes the volume is in and out, okay? Um, yeah, hopefully you guys can hear me. I hope that you guys have been doing well. And I, like I said, I'm just going to get right on into this dream, okay? So um, I had the dream a couple of weeks ago. I'm not sure the date because I didn't write it down. But in this dream, there was three different groups of type of men, okay? The first group of men were heavyset men. And then the second group of men, they just had on regular t-shirts. And then the third group of men, they had on like these sweaters, almost like the um, fraternity or frat. I don't know which one it is for the men. They go to college, they have like the letter of their name or something on it. They had that letter on the sweater, okay? So then as the dream goes on, I see that there's like an assembly of chairs and then there's this woman standing like in front of the seats. And then all these three different groups of men were supposed to be sitting at these seats, but they were not actually sitting at the seats. There was just one man in particular that was sitting um, in the audience. But I could sense that all of those groups of men were supposed to be sitting down, but I could only see this one man. And so this one man, he looked like a older gentleman. He looked like he was very, like, very old in, in age. And then I saw all of a sudden how this man's face turned into um, the younger version of himself. So he became younger, and basically his face turned into, like, his son's face. And then I seen how the son's face had, like, this glory shining on the face. Like, the face was smooth, and then there was, like, a glory over his face. All right, and so then after that, I saw how this man um, walked and stood next to the woman that was standing in front of these uh, this assembly of chairs, which were supposed to be seating men seated in the audience. And so this man, he gets up and then he goes and he stands next to the woman and he's telling the woman um, about something that's going on, something that was very public between the woman and these men. And as he's speaking to the woman, the woman is agreeing with him. She's like, yeah, like, yeah, like she knows. Like they both were in agreement about what actually was going on. So in this dream, there was something that had happened to where something looked a certain way publicly, but in reality, the man and this woman knew the truth about what was really going on. And then I seen how the man handed the woman a phone, okay? He handed the woman a phone to call her kingdom spouse okay so she calls her kingdom spouse and her kingdom spouse is talking to her about the public situation the man starts talking to the woman and only thing I heard in the conversation was the man say to the woman I'm fighting for you and then I heard the woman reply back to him and she's like as you should and then the man hangs up the phone and then after that the woman calls him back and then she apologizes and then she says, I love you. And the man didn't say, I love you back. But I can see like from his end of the conversation where he was, I can see that he had accepted her apology, but um, he just did not say, I love you back. And then I heard the woman say bye, okay? And so that was the end of the dream. So the revelation that the Lord was giving me concerning this dream, in the beginning, the three different sets of men, represents this woman having influence to men okay there was no women involved in these um in the audience it was just three different groups of men meaning representing they come from different areas they all look different some of them was like college men some well educated some of them were regular guys some of them you know heavy set so all different kinds of men right they're attracted to this woman and so then um the fact that there was like an assembly of these chairs where these men were supposed to be seated and then the woman was like standing in front of it almost like like an auditorium or a class but it was really big and so this represented this woman having influence to these men and so it looked like from the public view whoever this word is for you could be um someone that's on tv or you could just be someone that has influence in some kind of way whatever you do um men are drawn to you for the reason that god has called you to help them in some kind of way 
And so publicly, it seemed like this woman was trying to get the attention of these men, but that wasn't really what was going on. And so the man that was in the audience, I remember asking God, I was like, why was the focus on this man? Why did not I see any of the other men in the audience? Why did I only see this man? And like I said, it was an older gentleman. And so this gentleman that was the older man turned into his younger self, which was the son. So the son was the woman's kingdom spouse, okay? Stay with me, okay? The son was the woman's kingdom spouse, and he had a glory over his face, okay? The reason why this was the only man that was in the audience was because whatever this thing that had happened publicly, um, where it looked like this woman was trying to get the attention of men, it wasn't that. She was trying to get the attention of her kingdom spouse. That's why the older gentleman, he represented God, okay? So the older man represented God, the father. The younger man represented his son, which is Jesus Christ, and the glory that was over his face represented the Holy Spirit, okay? I hope y'all still with me. So the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, the Trinity, God is saying that to the woman, um, your kingdom spouse is going to have a lot of glory over him. Um, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit will be with him, okay? So when God the Father, which was the dad that was seated in the audience, the father got up and he stood next to the woman and that's when he was talking to her about what actually was going on and she was like yeah i know you know this is the this is the real truth like this is really what's going on they were in agreement so god and the woman knew the truth about what was going on even though it looked different to the public to the public it seemed like this woman was trying to get the attention of men but the reality was she was trying to get the attention of her husband and that's why it was only the one man that i saw from the beginning so God the Father came and stood next to her and handed her a phone, okay, to talk to her kingdom spouse. So she's talking to her kingdom spouse, and her kingdom spouse is like, I'm fighting for you. And then she says back to him, as you should. And then he hangs up the phone, okay. And then um, she calls back, she apologizes, all right. So God is highlighting um, two things here. One, he's highlighting the woman's attitude, okay, towards her husband. So her husband didn't know what was going on at first. So the husband was just kind of like talking to his wife about the situation that looked very public, um, but he didn't really understand what was going on. And I seen in the dream how the father wasn't interrupting the woman to tell her like, hey, you need to tell him the truth. And I seen how she wasn't really interrupting her husband on the phone. Um, I say husband, wife, because sometimes I don't like to say kingdom spouse or God ordained spouse. But she talking to her husband on the phone and um, I can see how he's just talking about the situation and she's not really feeling the, the need to interrupt him to tell him the truth. So when he said, I'm fighting for you, and then she's like, as you should, and hangs up the phone, um, this is God highlighting the woman's attitude about how her husband is in the background fighting. Her attitude was not the right attitude, okay, to have during this communication. She felt like very entitled. And so, um, she also like is being rude by the way she's talking to him and that's why he hung up the phone so god is saying to the woman of god who this word is for not to talk to your husband any kind of way when this communication comes together okay he is saying to check your attitude to make sure that you're being respectful um in this communication and then i seen how after he hung up the phone she called back and she apologized and after she apologized, she said, I love you, and he didn't say it back, and then um, she said bye, all right? So, God is also highlighting the husband's attitude towards the wife. He's also telling the husband to check your heart posture towards your wife, um, to not deprive her of love, to not give her the silent treatment. Um, yeah, he's saying to check your heart concerning your wife to not be the man that's um not showing affection okay so it's a check on both of y'all he's saying women check your attitude and he's saying men check your heart posture um before this communication before this conversation happens he wants to make sure that both of you treat each other with love and respect okay um and the woman like i said she apologized for how she had spoken to him and after she had apologized before she um, said, I love you, she had explained to him 
what actually happened. I forgot to say that she did explain to him what actually was going on after she apologized. And um, she was telling him the truth about what was really going on. And it was like she waited until he got mad before she explained. And so um, for some of you women that may be a sign from God to not let it get that far to where you wait until the man is mad before you explain what really is going on. Um, and she could have been apologizing too for her tongue, but this is still like a warning. Um, some of you, God is just saying that um, it may get to a point where he may get upset about something and you just need to make sure that you are ready to explain the truth behind the situation of whatever it could be that happened publicly, okay? Um, and then she said bye. Now, when she said bye, it was not um, bye like we're done with this conversation. I don't want to talk to you no more. It wasn't that kind of bye. It was... Um, like a bye i'll talk to you later like this issue has been resolved like we squashed the beef the issue like whatever it was i'll talk to you later like we are now in communication okay so it was that kind of a bye and so yeah god is saying you know get ready for this communication to come women check your attitude husbands check your hearts um also the scene where the father son and the holy spirit had took place god is saying like i said before that your husband will have a lot of influence okay and after i had this dream and god was giving me the revelation he brought up in my mind the episode of spongebob where um squidward became handsome okay so his face got hit with a door he became handsome okay and when he became handsome he was walking around the town the city bikini bottom and people were like surrounding him and just like falling out and stuff um, the cripple could walk, then the blind could see all this, these miracles were happening because of his handsomeness. And the handsomeness was the glory of God, okay? And so God is saying that your husband is going to be very influential, okay? So for who this is for, you already have influence, but God is just letting you know that your husband is also going to have influence, a lot of it, okay? And so um, then in the episode of SpongeBob, his face became more handsome because SpongeBob kept slamming the door in his face to try to get rid of the handsomeness but that only made him more handsome which means god was revealing to me that um throughout you know your husband's life no matter the persecution no matter um what storms tests or trials may come his way um it's only going to give him more glory all right and then in the same episode i believe i don't know if it was Squidward's fault or somebody else's fault, but he ended up hitting his face on a pole, and that's what made his face go back to normal. And um, God was kind of speaking to me about, like, your husband would be the only one that can get in the way of this glory not being with him anymore, okay? And so, yeah, I'm going to leave that video of that episode and the explanation of it in the description box if you guys want to watch it. Um, it'll be there. The scripture that I'm going to leave with you guys today is... Ephesians 5 verses 22 through 33 all right and so it reads wives submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord for the husband is the head of the wife even as Christ is the head of the church and he is the Savior of the body therefore as the church is subject unto Christ so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourished it and cherished it even as the Lord, the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife, even as himself, and the wife see that she reverence her husband. Okay? So like I said before, God is calling a check to the women to make sure you respect 
and honor your husbands and for the husbands to love your wives, okay? Um, again, the, the video of SpongeBob episode will be in the description box. And I will see you guys in the next video. And y'all have a blessed day. Bye.